John Bettino, yes. okay. Janice Ferraby, director. Mark Johnson, who's helped us with whatever we need. Robin Beener, treasurer of our. But there's more work to do in War II, and I need all of your help and support to do that. So we need to work on more affordable housing in War II. Yes! yes. Woo! So that everyone that comes to our city has an opportunity to live in War II. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We have to look after our seniors. Yes! So we want to pass the Senior Pension Tax Abatement Act oh, right. to give yeah. seniors let them keep more of their money. Yeah. We want to fully fund the Office of Human Rights so they continue to investigate the backlog of discrimination cases. Okay, yes. We want to support our small business community and stop brown paper from covering the windows in our commercial corridors. Yeah. Like the Main Street designation on 14th Street. All right. And the clean team and hiring returning citizens. Yes. And also we want to work on rodent abatement. Yeah. Yes. 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 Eradicate those rats from racing down your alley. That's right. right. That's right. So Stop. these are a lot of the issues that I don't think were a priority for our former council member. Um, and I think that we need to elect somebody who could go to the council and get the job done on day one. Yes. And as the new entrants in the race said, we don't need anyone on the job training. Yes. Yes. That's me! Yes. 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 Nothing has prepared me more than my sixth term serving on the ANC Commission. My colleagues have elected me five times as the chairman. Yes. I've worked for several mayors in the community relations office. I know how the government works. I get things done. And together we will make War II a better place to live, work, and play. Yes. So as our city's experience in great economic times, I feel that we need to share the economic pros prosperity with everyone that lives in War II. Absolutely. Not just the few and the powerful, right? Right. right. And uh, this right. is the people's campaign yes. because I'm glad right. to say we're not being bankrolled by special interest groups no. well, who later will be indebted to these other candidates that are running in this race. I've signed up for fair elections. The maximum contribution is $50. It gets matched five times. 
We need you to send your friend, whether it's 10, 20, 50. It gets matched five times through the, through the public financing program. Excellent. These other candidates have non, you know, national organizations that have affiliates throughout the whole United bankrolling their campaigns. Right. We now have a corporate lobbying group hosting a fundraiser for one of the candidates. And we're trying to keep big money out of politics. That's right. Yeah. So this is this campaign is being run by grassroots yes. activists, my colleagues on the ANC, the neighbors I've been helping for 30 years, the relationships I've had with friends for 30 years. Well. So thank you so much for coming. Any questions? I'm proud to say that I've been endorsed by 35 business owners. Andy Shalal, who owns Busboards and Poets. Yes. Andy. Andy and I have been friends for a long time. David Weiner, that owns Eat Well DC. Praise God. Jim Abdo, that came into the neighborhood when nobody wanted to live in Logan Circle. Yes and purchased all these properties and made the neighborhoods mm -hmm. more vibrant and livable again. Mm -hmm. So um, I would ask that if we, you could sign up our sheet as an endorsee, we'd love to add your name to the list because now <laughs> folks will be looking at how much money you raise, who's endorsing you. This is on now, the yeah. game is on. Oh. Oh. It We're fine. Look, I got the fire yeah. in there. Yes, yes, you're uh, ready. You've had the opportunity to hear from the next War II council yeah. member. Yeah, excellent. But the, the real question is, what can you do to bring John to the Wilson Building? Yes. A, you can make a donation. B, you can sign up to be a volunteer, whether that be helping knocking on doors, whether that be collecting signatures to get John on the ballot. Um, you want to be making phone calls on behalf of John. If you want to just talk to your neighbors on behalf of John. If you're on social media, do you have a Facebook account? Do you like John's page? Do you ask your friends to like John's page? If you're on Twitter, and I know some of you are, that you want to follow John's Twitter account. You want to retweet some of his messages. We want to build this network of grassroots community members that John is gonna ride all the way to the Wilson Building. Like John said, we have these other groups that are backing candidates that don't necessarily have the best interest of the residents of Ward 2. They have their interests, and that's it. And if those are the people that get elected, that's all they're accountable for. But we want somebody in the office that's gonna be accountable to you, and that's John Fanning. So before you leave, Make sure you've made a donation, regardless if it's $5, $10, every bit helps. Sign up to be a volunteer. Sign one of the public endorsement statements saying that I support John Fanning for Ward 2 Council Member. Yeah. And later on, we'll be doing testimonials from people that John has impacted over the years. I know myself personally, John has been a friend like no other, and there was nothing in it for him. He wasn't running for office. He was doing what he normally does. And so for all the people that John has helped, it is time now to help John. So that's what we need to do. Thank you. Yeah. So my work doesn't just involve, you know, involve the Logan Circle community. I'm happy to share with you a lot of the things that I've worked on. 
most of the folks in the race don't really even realize that I got the street closure permits for the DuPont Farmers Market. There you Otherwise, go. that market wouldn't yeah. even be He's there. there. That's yeah. why. 1990, and Senator Charles Percy to get the Georgetown Waterfront Park developed. Mm -hmm. That's right. And my role was to move those trash trucks out of Woo! that park. Yes. So we went from parking lot to park, right? There you go. Right. And right. I'm proud to say in Foggy Bottom at 26th and K Street, I worked with the ANC commissioner and secured $175,000 funding to redo that door park and playground. Okay? That's right. And when it wasn't popular in 1992, I was one of two commissioners out of six that voted to support the affordable housing and the End Street Village development. There you go. And look at all the great work they do. Yeah, that's right. And my disappointment with the former council member was we have the largest homeless population of residents in the city, well, and he doesn't even serve on the Human Services Committee. There you go. I will. We're going to come go. up with real solutions in yes. a humane way to connect these folks to the city services that we already provide. Affordable housing. Yes. Building more single room occupancy. Building more senior facilities yes. so that they can remain in the city giving them a tax break on their income taxes so they're not financially strained to stay here. I could get the job done on day one. Let's make it happen. Right, there you go. Oh, absolutely. It is beyond just a pleasure to have a person of your status, of your years of service. And you know, I just want to say one thing I want you to remember, and I know you know, is that when I met this man, the, the city was dominated predominantly by black Americans. And the, the late, great, undeniable man for life, Marion S. Berry Jr. found it absolutely essential, imperative, to hire the one and only, in the back, John Fanning. Right. And that's because John is a man for the people. Not just based on your ethnicity or how much money that you can acquire or have, but because of what it is that you need. He's the man that get it what? Done. He's the man that do what? Get it? Done. He's the man when you need him and he get it? Done. He's the man who communicate and you need it? Done. All right, but let me also add another thing. You never should give me the opportunity to talk. <laughs> You know what, I, I, I have to say that as the founder of the Friends of Carter Baron Foundation for the Performing Arts and reopening the Carter Baron Amphitheater, oh you know, um, I may, I am very dramatical, I'll probably be that way until the day that I leave this earth. But as a proud 62 year old woman, what? Yes, <laughs> You know what, when I sat down with John and asked him to be a board member, he said, absolutely, Gloria. Because Carter Barron is for all people. And it was John who recommended, Gloria, you're dealing with the house only. And let me just say, on Wednesday, February the 26th, because of your recommendation, the friends of Carter Barron are taking that 2.6 billion dollar house approval of interior to the house even though the impeachment and all of the retaliations between the one and only interesting president of the United States of America Trump oh, there you go but you know what I don't care how much we don't like them we need those doors open from the gift yeah. of President Harry S. Truman which is Carter Baron Amphitheater. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not about who you don't like. 
as it relates to the Carter Bear, John said. It is about getting the Senate to approve that $2.6 billion budget for the Department of Interior. So thank you, John, for recommending our meeting at the Jackson House Office Building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory and I have a very special relationship. <laughs> when she approached me <laughs> and I saw her passion for the arts That's good. and, Thank you, dear. and, and um, the youth of our city yes. and getting them more involved in the arts. And then she told me her years of working with the Carter Baron and I said, how can I help you, right? That's right. So it's a treasure up there. It's not in War II. But we will all be visiting on the grand opening Absolutely. when they Absolutely. renovate that entire theater, Absolutely. along with the other facilities that go along. Make with sure a multitasking right. man. Right. So these are the things that you can do if they're your priorities, right? And I want to, you know, if you just look around the room, yes. this is a reflection of our city. I think I have the most diverse and inclusive campaign in War II. And, all, and this room demonstrates that because it's not just about John Fanning. It's about we and us, right? That's true. And, you know, and I guess this comes with maturity. I don't need, you know, or maybe they have larger egos than I do. But we're in this together. You know, I have a very different style than the former council member. I'm very retail. I will be very accessible. And you could see that from my years of chairing our A and C. We're very inclusive. We allow everybody to speak. Everybody's engaged in the process. Because whatever decisions I make, we all have to live with. But guess what? You're going to help me make them. So yeah. I can say later on, this is what you told me to do. Right? Yeah. So one of the first things, and I bring this up all the time, and since other candidates keep talking about it, must have been a good idea. Mm -hmm. One of the first things I'm going to do is have a War II Citizen Summit at the Washington Convention Center. Because win or lose, we all need to come together in the end. Because we all need to work, you know, and after what's been going on in the ward, we have to unite. Mm -hmm. And we will separate in tables by neighborhood and by businesses, and we will compile all this data and the theme will be, what would you like for your neighborhood? And that, you know, after we populate all that data, that's what's going to help me legislate for the next four years. So you will all have um, involvement and accessibility to me in doing that. And that's how I separate myself from Jack F. I'm not going to have any part-time job. I'm not, like I said, my campaign isn't being bankrolled by corporate lobbyist, I don't have a lot of strings attached to me. You need something, you come to my office, we will have the best constituent service staff, you know, you have a tree that falls down, I know what button to push. You know, your, your sidewalk collapses, I know what budget to, you know, button to push to get somebody out there to fix it. And I think, you know, basically, that's what people really want to see. They want to be heard. They want to see city service delivery improved. And they want them, you know, they want to know that they have someone representing them that's going to have integrity, that's going to be responsive. And you know, I've been doing this the majority of my life. Yes, you have. So my, my, the majority of my life I've been helping people. Mm -hmm. And I'm not ready to stop doing that. And that's when I stepped up to run for the city council street. I was frustrated. And one of the frustrations were the underfunding for the Office of Human Rights, yes. where folks go to complain about discrimination mm -hmm. cases, when they didn't get the $700 million that they needed. Mm -hmm. When Food and Friends, that yes. served meals to folks that are struggling with cancer. Where is this council's compassion for the least, the lost, and the last, right? Amen. So that's what motivated me to do this. I think I have something to offer the city. I love the city. I love its people. And I hope you will help me make it to the John Wilson. Yeah. Woo!